What's up guys, Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out 10 cool PC tech gadget and accessories all under $50. I did one of these like 3-4 years ago, so I figured why not revive it and do it again. If you see anything you like, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. So first up, I won't spend too much time on this one because we have showed this off in a vlog a few months back. But here we have some custom AIO sleeves from Cable Mod. This pretty much just lets you sleeve and add color to your current AIO tubing so it matches the look of the rest of your build or your setup. It just wraps around the stock tube, it's simple as that. It has caps for both sleeves on the top and bottom so it doesn't slide or fall off. And now visually, it's just going to fit in better with the rest of your hardware. They do sell these in different colors, obviously, and they are for different AIOs like NZXT, Corsair, and EVGA, and they're only $20. Next up was a nifty M.2 NVMe to USB-C enclosure for adding more space to your PC. And while these drives are becoming more and more affordable, so it's easier just to keep adding them to your build, a lot of motherboards out there only have like two or three slots max. So this will let you connect it via an available USB-C slot. And what I like about this is, first up, it's toolless, so it makes adding or swapping drives if you need to a breeze without having to go into a drawer and find one of those tiny screwdrivers. Also, it comes with different heat sinks depending on the size of your drive that you're using, as well as thermal pads to use, so it's going to help keeping the heat dissipation more reasonable. Then assembly is really just like adding it to your motherboard as you would. You slide the M key connector on the bottom into the slot, it'll click in. Then they have this little spring-loaded holder that kind of hooks into the back of the drive and then connects to the chassis with the cutouts in the bottom, so think of it like Legos. It just snaps in and now it's secure without the need of any screws. Then you just apply your thermal pad and heat sink up top and close it up and you're good to go. Um, I would definitely check out the listing for compatibility, but it is pretty straightforward. Speed wise, the data transfer rate is up to 10 gigabits per second for USB 3.1. I was hitting at around 900 read and write. And also it might sound stupid, but I like the way it looks with that see-through kind of polycarbonate look to it. Uh, definitely matches the current trend of a lot of custom keyboards out there. I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. This one from iNeo is $32. Now we've got two internal hardware gadgets to add to your motherboard. Um, one is an alternative to that enclosure I just showed you, which is this Sabrent PCIe NVMe card. And then is an AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth card. So every motherboard is going to be different in terms of layout, but here, the longer PCIe lane is the PCIe 16 slot for adding things like graphics card or the NVMe card we're going to be adding. And the shorter one here is a PCIe 1 slot, which we're going to use for the Wi-Fi card. So for the actual PCIe Sabrent NVMe card, uh, this is just like the enclosure in the sense it's pretty straightforward when it comes to application and installation. Once you take out the four screws holding it all together, inside it does come with three additional thermal pads, again to you know add to the card itself, the aluminum heatsink. You just snap your NVMe card into place in the board with the M key connector. You use the included screw to just lock it into place so it doesn't come loose during use. You apply your thermal pad on top to your drive, put it all back together, put back the four screws in, and you're set. So this does go into an available PCIe 16 slot like I showed you. So I'm just adding it to the bottom one here. It clicks right in like when you install a graphics card. And now you're gonna be getting better speed and performance versus something like the external enclosure, which is more convenient that way, yes. Uh, but here, it's a better solution in terms of speed and for the long-term use. This Sabrin card is only $18 as well. Now, as for that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, this goes into an available PCIe 1 LAN like I showed. And the benefit of having an internal card like this is a much more reliable connection for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth versus those USB ones you can buy out there that do often cut out. Here, you won't have to worry about that. For Bluetooth, you will have to connect an additional cable to an available USB header on your motherboard, but that's pretty standard for adding this internally. And since it's at the bottom of the board here, it shouldn't be an eyesore. You can probably manage that cable pretty easily. Now to also help its connection, once it's installed into your build, you're going to have these two antennas to attach externally to the internal card to establish and maintain that connection. So on this AX3000 unit with the Wi-Fi 6, you can get up to 2400 megabits per second on a 5G connection and over 550 on just 2.4G. So when it comes to selecting your router during setup, you know, pick 5G if possible. For me in the studio, I do have a gigabit connection, and as you can see, the speeds real time weren't taking a hit at all. And also in terms of like connecting to Bluetooth devices and peripherals, also no problems. It's only $24 for the card. Next up is my go-to VPN, which is private internet access. And this video was sponsored and approved by private internet access, but I do use them. I've used them for the past like two, three years now at this point. So they have been my go-to. And if you don't have a VPN, you gotta change that right now. 
Having a VPN like private internet access lets you unblock all sorts of content from streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and so on by bypassing the geo restrictions. And also if you're in your country, you have certain sites and content blocked. This is a great way to get around that. Private internet access is available for all platforms from Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and many others. Plus you can use one subscription to protect up to 10 devices at once. They have a strict no logs policy in place, making this truly as private as possible, which is something I definitely look for when I'm searching for a VPN. They have over 20,000 servers in over 70 different countries. And for me as a content creator, I use this to hide my IP address so it conceals my location. Obviously, I'm not trying to get doxxed. Another thing I did a few months back was um, there was an album coming out that I really wanted to hear and I was just getting very impatient. So I set my location to the Netherlands and I had access to that album a few hours before anybody in the US did. So uh, maybe you can do that as well. There's just tons of benefits to a VPN. If you want to check it out, there's a 30 day money back guarantee in place. They have 24 seven customer support available. And by using my link down below, you can get complete digital privacy for less than $3 a month and three months extra for free. Like I said, I'll have a link for you in the description down below to check out private internet access. Next up, maybe you could use these. These are little LED gloves. And uh, the main purpose that I saw these for that I think could be, you know, utilized the most by you guys would be for when it comes to, you know, building your PC, getting in there, plugging all the cables in. There's not a lot of light in your PC when you're building it. So these could help you out a little bit. Yes, I know uh, the shock factor right off the bat might be a little bit too much, right? Like, do you really need little lights on your fingers? Uh, but no one ever said no to that. Like I said, the real practical use case here is when it comes to building a PC, if you need that extra light. I know for me, a lot of times I would just use the light on my phone and I have to like balance my phone in there and try to get the right angle. So it's shining on where I'm trying to illuminate. Uh, but with these, it's literally right at my fingertips. You're now ET. And a little life hack for you. Next time, you know, you're at the club when the whole pandemic thing lifts and it's in the past, you're at the club with your boys again. Wear one of these one night. You'll have your picking of the whole bunch. All right, next, I know for me, um, when I'm constantly swapping out hardware and stuff for PC builds, I lose or misplace or mix and match different screws. So why not get a whole screw box for less than $10? So while this one's not like fun necessarily, having all these extra screws and standoffs in this little kit is definitely helpful because how many times are you swapping hardware? Maybe you, you, you lose some screws, you misplace them. Different components need different sizes. Having them all here is just very, very convenient. So now having a kit of 228, pretty handy. And it's only eight bucks, so you do the math. It's good value. Now next up is something that I constantly use, not only PC building, but keyboard builds as well. And that's these little magnetic trays. So you can get them at a pack of four, as you can see, a bunch of different colors. And you can check back in my videos, like pretty much whenever I'm building a keyboard, whenever I'm doing a, uh, a PC build, you will see these in the background on my desk. It's just a very convenient way to keep your screws organized in place while you're building. So the main point of this is really just convenience and organization. Uh, again, pretty self-explanatory, but it is one of my go-to accessories whenever I am building something new for the channel. Uh, and I think the pack of four uh, was 15 bucks total, I wanna say, but again, four different ones here for you, all different colors, mix and match. Now we've got this little Noctua fan controller, and this little module is pretty much a manual fan controller that can control the speeds of up to three fans. This is great if you don't want to worry about, you know, software controlling your fans and the speed and stuff, especially for like water-cooled builds. If you want to have that manual control, this is a great little gadget. Now this is compatible with only three pin fans, so do keep that in mind. And depending on your motherboard, if the power draw from the fans exceeds the total wattage allotted for that motherboard, you're gonna have to use the included SATA cable to give it that extra power. In terms of design, the little dial in the middle controls the speed. On the bottom, there's a button for no stop mode. And that makes sure the fans never fall below 300 RPM. Then up top you have two little LEDs which are pretty much status indicators. So the only real caveat with this is you're gonna need to have access to it, you know? So make sure you do mount it in a convenient spot. This comes in at 20 bucks, which I think is just really good for the price. And the last recommendation for today is gonna be my go-to thermal paste when I'm doing my builds. And it's what I use in my build behind me with my i9-10900K CPU. And that's just Cooler Master Master Gel Maker. What I really like about this is the applicator. So depending on your preferred application, whether it's the P method or really whatever, I think it's all kind of proven to not matter in the end. This evenly spreads out a nice line on the CPU itself, so it's nice and flat, and it just makes the spread more consistent when you apply your cooler. 
So back when I built my PC, I did run some tests and using the stock thermal paste that was applied on my NZXT AIO, I believe after an hour stress test, we were running at around, I believe it was 87 degrees Celsius. Uh, but with this, we got it down to 84, running that same exact test. So three degree difference might not seem like too much, uh, but in the end, cooler is better. They do sell other ones with different conductivity and use cases, but this one I have here is only 15 bucks and it works great. So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for this video on 10 cool PC tech gadgets and accessories under $50, sponsored by Private Internet Access. Thank you again. If you wanna check them out, as well as all the gear I showed off today, I'll have it listed for you in the description down below. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP, and last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope y'all enjoyed, have a good day.